Pitt. Um, Joel has a YouTube channel, awesome channel, um, and it ha has all the other social accounts as well. Joel, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. I appreciate you having me, man. Yeah. So uh, I usually start by throwing some rapid fire uh, questions, either or questions at you. Um, I'll let you answer them. I like all right. I like it. All right. Uh, favorite animal to hunt besides a white tailed deer? Elk. Okay. Yeah. Elk is elk is a, a second. It's a close runner up like with whitetail, but if there were no other animals to hunt, you, you could only pick one. It'd be whitetail. Um, my second pick would be elk mule deer's close, but elk is probably over mule deer. I just love the elk meat. <laughs> yeah. Um, now did you, gr you grew up and we'll dive into this too, but did you grow up on whitetail? Is that why it's kind of your first love? Yep. Yep. I live in Nebraska. So our, our main species that we hunt here in Nebraska would be whitetail mule deer. We do have elk, but is extremely hard to, uh, draw a tag. So elk is kind of out of the question in Nebraska. So whitetail and mule deer are your two main big game aside from Turkey. But, um, yeah, so whitetail is definitely my go-to. Okay. Yeah. I was curious to hear what you're going to say there. All right, now public land. This is whitetail. Um, public or private? Private, if I have the option. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. any more, the option for private is dwindling um, in terms of access. There's a lot of, um, if there's not outfitters, especially in Nebraska, if there's not outfitters lead up, um, somebody else is already hunting it or rifle hunting it. Um, whether it be their family members or friends of family and stuff like that. I'll always say private land just because typically the hunting is going to be better. And that's what we're all looking for is like a good hunt. Um, but that being said, I hunt a good bit of public ground. Like <laughs> anymore, it's mostly what I hunt. Um, just because the access to, like I say, the access to land in Nebraska is kind of um, dwindling, knocking on doors isn't working as much as it used to when I was 16. Um, and so anyway, I'm kind of, I'm kind of turning to a lot more public land these days and it's fun. It's a, it's a challenge, but um, I love challenges. And so, yeah, I would say if I had a preference, probably private land, but we're going to kick it on public either way. All right. Yeah. And I want to dive into something you said later on there, but, uh, all right. My next one is going to be solo hunt or with somebody. Oh, dang. That's yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hard. Okay. So if we are just, if we're talking about just solely folk, like punching a tag, um, and having a successful hunt in that regard. Oh gosh. Pro if it's man, that's probably solo just because, um, I know how I like to do things. I know how I work on the mountain mm -hmm. or even if it's in the mountain, if it's a Western hunt or a Midwestern whitetail hunt. Um, I just, I bounce around so much. I'm so mobile and, uh, some people's hunting styles. Yeah are better mobile and others are not. Um, I've got a couple of good hunting buddies that I almost would just say it's almost like a solo hunt just because our minds work so, yep. so well together and how we hunt together is like very identical. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to hunt with a hunting buddy like that. But if we're talking about just like having, just a fun time, just a fun hunt and just people hanging out and, and, uh, just getting to share experiences together, share the mountain together and stuff like that. Definitely having a hunting partner would be, uh, my second choice. Like I say, if we're looking yeah. at just punching a tag <laughs> solo. Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I'd almost, I prefer, I think hunting with somebody. I, 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 uh, like you're right though, punching a tag. If I've got four days to punch a tag or else I can never hunt again, I'll probably just go out right. by myself. But yeah, I don't know the experiences with somebody, especially someone close, you know what I'm saying? Someone like yeah. a friend yeah. 
it's like nothing, yeah. you know, it's like you shoot one by yourself, you're pumped, but, and you're calling, you know, I'm always calling everybody. Yeah. It's uh, a lot of, it's a lot of work when you shoot one by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Especially if you're deep on some public ground, but uh, okay. Um, and then my last one, uh, this one would be, I don't know how many States, you know, you've whitetail hunted in, but yeah. Favorite state to hunt in, not including Nebraska. So um, I've hunted, I've hunted Nebraska, Oklahoma, Missouri, Texas. Um, I haven't got to hunt Kansas or Iowa yet. I just haven't put in in I either state until this year, and I think I've got to check the draws. I think they come out sometime this month for Kansas. I should be able to pull a Kansas tag this year. Um, Iowa, I definitely am not going to. That's a couple of years down the road. But of the states I've hunted, uh, it'd be a toss-up between Missouri and Oklahoma. Oklahoma public mm. land is way better. Like Oklahoma really? public land was solid. Oh, yeah. I, we, I've got, had some pretty crazy encounters on Oklahoma public um private land missouri for sure um i've got some buddies who live in missouri who are kind enough to allow me they're uh farmers out there in missouri so they yep. have a lot of just crop ground crop land and stuff like that um that they allow me to just kind of turn loose during bow season i can go out there and kind of just hang and hunt and do my own thing so That's nice. definitely missouri for missouri for private oklahoma for public for sure yeah, we're actually in Missouri as well. Um, I grew up in Missouri my whole life, so that's all I really know as far as hunting and, and then elk hunting as well. But um, yeah, um, Missouri hunting is great. But I will say on public ground in Missouri, it's pretty busy. I think there's a lot of people on a lot of the public yeah. grounds in Missouri, especially northern Missouri up by Nebraska. Yeah, that's going to be full yep. of hunters and full of people. And and then rifle season. I found it similar situation to Nebraska with the, with, with the way that public land is handled and the way people hunt it. I've found yeah. it to be very similar situations, Nebraska and Missouri both. So, yeah. And I grew up kind of central Missouri, Northern central Missouri area by Jefferson city, by the Capitol. And, you know, growing up, you really didn't knock on doors because like you said, everybody either was hunting it, rifle hunting it, leased it, farm ground. They want to, you know, just, it was always that, but I moved um, and I live now in Southwest Missouri down by Arkansas. And I started knocking on doors down here because I didn't have any ground down here to hunt. And it was just like, yeah, man, no one's hunted in 20 years. <laughs> and it was just one after another. I feel like there's just a less amount of Stop hunters it. in this area. Yeah. It's, it's honestly been crazy. Right. I've got some really good properties down here, but it's just different. Like you said, I don't think you can knock on doors like yeah. that in Northern Missouri. Is it a, uh, is it big timber? No. Um, is it big timber tracks on it? It is um, near Branson, Missouri. I'm more towards Springfield, Missouri, which kind of flattens out. It's really hilly, you know, down towards Branson, Arkansas, the mountains down there. Um, but where I am located next to my house, it is pretty wide open. There's a lot of crops. Um, so it produces some really good deer. I mean, the property I just landed is a place that grew up over 20 years was not taken care of. So it's like, you know, you can imagine the briars everywhere. Yeah. But the, but the hunting, you know, I, it's just one of those things. And I don't want to go too far in that story, but the, the homeowner said, I put a deer camera out this year and he kind of shows up me a picture. And I was like, okay, there's no way he's going to, and he said, yeah, hunt all you want have at it. Um, yeah. So it's been, it's been kind of nice. So, but, uh, no, that was all my rapid fire. Oh, sorry. My bad. There's a delay. There's a delay. No, you're good. I was gonna say I've got I've got a little bit of delay in audio, so I apologize if it sounds like I'm interrupting. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to catch the delay. Yeah. So um, it's kind of a funny story. So when I started hunting, nobody in my family hunted. My dad um, had like bird hunted and stuff in college, but he'd never deer hunted. My grandpa had taken a deer back when he was like. 19 like way way back but since then he had never hunted so hunting wasn't really like instilled in my family or anything like that but I did grow up on an acreage so my parents have like six acres out here in the country mm -hmm. and I just grew up like just enjoying the outdoors loving the outdoors and being outside as much as I possibly could and uh so anyway that obviously sets me around you know seeing deer seeing 
turkeys, seeing pheasants and stuff. We have a little pond to go fishing and stuff like that. So it was, it was just brewing at a young age that it was like, I just really enjoy the outdoors. And, um, anyway, when I was about 12 years old, I had seen, it was like, I assume it was November. It had to have been during the rut. Cause I remember seeing a buck chasing the doe in the backfield to where my parents' place is. And I thought it was so cool that it was just like, what's happening? Like, why is this deer chasing this other deer so hard, you know? And, uh, from then it was like, from what I could tell, it was a, a, from what I remember, it was a pretty big buck. It probably was like a little four corn two point or something like that. But in my head, I'm like, Oh my gosh, that looks like a big buck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, I also was able to see a couple of deer fighting same field. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Days later couple it had to been during the rut they were just Mm -hmm. all over the place so I remember thinking then I'm like man that would be really fun to um just try to hunt deer see if I can get close to them you know I just wanted to be closer to them and uh so anyway I started buying a lot of Realtree and Drury Outdoors videos Mm -hmm. like their VHS tapes at the The time VHS yeah 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 Yeah, so VHS tapes I'd go to I'd go to walmart they were selling them at walmart um we had a shields kmart i mean they were just like wherever you could find a vhs tape we'd we'd be able to find them so i was picking up the the ones that were going on sale so they were usually like two or old so i was picking those up so i have some of the original like old school real tree videos which is really cool i still have them cool so um so started watching a lot of that stuff and one of the guys i really took to couple guys i took to on the videos um it was right when michael waddell started actually hunting on the videos as opposed to filming um and then david blanton so those two guys were like a real kick and then of course mark and terry drury those all those guys were kind of kickstart to my um what is now a a full-blown obsession but uh so back in the days, it was just watching those videos and just, man, I really want to try this. And then come when I was 12, that coming Christmas, I asked my mom and dad, I was like, hey, if I pay for half of it and you guys pay for half of it, can I buy a bow? And like, I just want to start shooting a bow and getting into archery. And they're like, I think they were kind of blindsided by it. They're like, what? Like, yeah. what? what do you want? Like nobody in our family bow hunted, you know? So it was just like okay you know yeah that's fine so i got my first bow it was a youth alpine micro Mm -hmm. uh, and just started shooting that thing like every day i was obsessed with shooting it and i was shooting like full length walmart arrows i mean a 20 inch draw right 21 inch draw that it was sticking out about that far (laughs) oh my god yeah Yeah. foot of arrow out on the end of the rest but i didn't know better i didn't know arrows yeah. had cut down what or ne- should have been cut down so i was shooting walmart arrows at whatever spine i could find like mm-hmm. i'm sure all my arrows were different weights you know mm-hmm. uh, shooting broadheads didn't care if it was 100 grain 125 grain whatever i was just i was just screwing it onto the thing and shooting it um i mean if i could hit like the block target mm-hmm. at 20 it was like a good day right yeah um definitely wasn't proficient and i was shooting fingers so i was i was shooting oh, okay. i didn't know mechanical release was a thing like i'd seen it on the videos with you know michael and mm-hmm. david yeah. shooting, but i didn't even cross my mind i was just like oh, i'll just shoot finger you know anyway so started shooting then that that f- went through hunter's education and stuff and that following year uh was when i killed my first deer i killed a killed a big doe i hunted for like every day after school, before school, until I saw my first deer. And the first deer I sh- saw was a big mature doe. And I ended up shooting her at 28 yards and like absolute, just picture perfect double lunged her. I mean, it was just like did meant you, to be, you know? You so from then on first, did you get that first initial, um, you know, where you were shaking like crazy first kill and just uh, losing your mind? I didn't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what is new i just knew i hit a deer and i've i've watched enough of the videos to know that like where the arrow went was like that should be a fatal shot you know yeah and 
Uh, and it was, it was, I mean, it was just picture perfect. Like I say, it couldn't have worked out any better. So it just kind of sparked that, that drive of like, yeah. okay, I'll try to, and it was cool because it was like nobody in our family, like my dad and I, we processed the whole thing and we just learned it firsthand. You know, we hung deer yeah. up and That's pretty my cool. dad kind of cutting it stuff and, and packaging mm-hmm. stuff. And we just made a whole ordeal out of it you know and then we froze all the meat we were eating venison that whole next year and it was like this is cool like i shot Mm -hmm. this oh this is so it was a lot of fun and mom would use it in like spaghetti and chili and chili's really yeah chili's amazing my mom did that too yeah Yeah, cool so i felt like at an early age i felt like i was providing for the family even though like mom and dad would go buy beef they don't need deer you know but it was like I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, I'm providing for the family and I'm like 13. Yeah. So yeah, I would always tell people when we ate the chili, Hey, like people who didn't know that's my deer. That's, that's my deer in that chili. That's mine. That's the one. I, yeah. Everything. And like now my parents, now fast forward. Now two of my other brothers have gotten into hunting since, mm-hmm. um, my brother Caleb got into it gosh, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago. And my brother Ethan got into it maybe four years ago, three or four years ago. Um, so yeah, now, now I've got yeah. two of my brothers into it. Um, my oldest brother, Jared still is, I mean, he just enjoys watching what I do and stuff, but he's still yeah. not the hunting, but now I've got like my family's freezers are chalk, you know, whitetail, mule deer, coos deer, elk, like everything. And then I've got all my freezers full. My brother's freezers are full. I've got buddies who's got meat. So now it's just like a, yeah. you need meat, just call me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I think that's the best part uh, when your brothers get into it because yeah. the phone calls are more frequent and they're always about hunting, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, any excuse to talk to a family is great, but when they're into hunting, you know, like my brother was in hunting, but he was it wasn't the bow hunting, you know, everyone in Missouri rifle hunts when they grow up, it seems like that's kind of the thing. Right. Um, right. and when I, I, he went by, I had him go buy a crossbow. He's like, I'll buy a crossbow. I'm like, all right. He goes, I don't know how to shoot. And he bought one and he shot like 125 inch 10, like his first, like, you know, month. And then it was like, Oh, he's like, okay. All right. Um, and he went and bought, you know, a new bow, new everything. So, you know, I, that's the best part. So when he said that, I'm like, yeah, that's, having your brothers do it with you. And then, and I'm guessing they're just as, as addicted as you are getting that way. Getting there, <laughs> getting yeah. there. Yeah. Ethan definitely has a pretty good drive. Um, Caleb's he's uh, he just got um, engaged. So he's, hmm. he's, yeah. uh, you Same. know, got yeah. up on his mind. So, um, but they definitely have a love for it and a passion for it, which is good. Yeah. I'm just like, almost yeah. over obsessed with it so yeah yeah they're yeah. just like tell me what arrows to shoot and you're like well this yeah. one if you do this if you do that yeah you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's Ethan, funny thing is, um, Ethan, um pretty, like pretty versed in the archery side ethan become became like a really good shot um i taught him as much as i could you know to yeah. to the like here's how you know here's the form here, here's how you're holding your bow, shooting your bow, stuff like that. Try not to punch a trigger, try to pull through your shots, follow through. And he just really enjoyed the aspect of archery in general. Mm-hmm. So anyway, he just started shooting and shooting and shooting and he got to be pretty dang good at archery, like fast, like within the first year and a half, he was really good. And, um, in fact, he won our local, um, our local indoor 3d archery league after, oh, wow after two years of shooting and he was shooting against guys who were like pretty high level shots. I mean, not, yeah. not, but Ethan, Ethan's mindset was he'd never experienced target panic. He didn't even know what it was. So yeah. he was like, he was just like cranking good shot. Every shot was a good shot, you know? So he's shooting yeah. against guys like, develop target panic when they're in a tournament situation ethan doesn't even know any better he's just hitting everything he's just throwing, you know sometimes like every thing you do in like life the guy who comes in new that doesn't have any old bad habits from yep. when he taught himself 
it's like they seem to just you know it's anything shooting guns i mean i remember there's a guy who uh, we were shooting guns with never shot a gun in his life but was just throwing we, he listened to what we said and then he did it like he was really yep. you know it's just like they don't have any bad habit to think of you know so yeah that makes sense but that's pretty awesome that he's good uh shot he's gonna do like tack or do you guys go to that type of stuff yeah. or yeah he comes to he comes to a lot of the total archery challenges with me so yeah. we're going to uh at the end of this month we're going to south dakota oh, we've cool. already yeah to Oklahoma, um and then end of july we'll go to utah so we're hitting three total archery challenges this year that's gonna be big Th- those look like a really good time i i definitely i think i want to travel out to those um mm-hmm. i'd like to have maybe maybe do one i don't know i just really want to travel out and, and check those out i think that'd be fun yeah they're a ton of them. and it's fun because they're held at like they're held at ski resorts oh cool so um like the views are awesome you know you get it's just yeah. really used and then typically being around a ski resort there's usually like decent restaurants and stuff to go eat at and yeah. and the lodging you're usually staying in cabins which are like if you call get them ahead of time and reserve them and a lot of times because it they're during the summer and it's not a ski resort like winter time uh you can get discounts on the cabin so you're paying like way cheaper than what it yeah. would be in prime season. season yeah right so it's it's just a fun fun yeah. trip yeah I, def- I definitely want to go out and check them out i actually had a buddy text me yesterday about he's going to south dakota oh um, cool yeah so but yeah those are awesome so you started hunting shot your first doe and then it just kind of you kept snowballing from there and as you got older um it just kept you kept going or was there ever a break where you took like a year off or anything or you just kept getting more serious yeah, yeah it was all gas from there and yeah. i have um you know during during high school it was like it was always a juggle between like hanging out with friends all the time and going yeah. hunting stuff like that but it, i mean obviously mostly during just hunting season during the summer and stuff the summer was all i didn't do nearly as much scouting back then as i do now yeah. and more like now i'm diving way more and i have been for a long time now but way more into the technical side before season even starts like mm-hmm. season scouting shed hunting during you know off seasons hanging yeah. for season or prepping trees for saddle hunting hanging hunts um just walking property so now i'm doing a lot more of that stuff but um so in high school it was it honestly probably kept me out of a lot of trouble because <laughs> it was like if my buddies were going to a party and gonna go drinking or something like that i'm like guys i'm like i kind of want to hunt in the morning like look at the pictures of this 10 point i'm yeah. chasing yeah. so it's I, you know i very rarely went to like parties and stuff like that it kind of yeah. kept of a lot of trouble honestly so um yeah the obsession has never slowed down by any means if anything it's just continuing to just ramp up yeah yeah it's just one of those things that and that's why i love doing this because you know just talking to different people about and because there's i don't feel like there's a huge amount of people you meet every day that have the obsession to the level of you or yeah. what level of obsession I have, which I, you know, I probably could go way higher. Right. Um, yeah. but it's just great to talk to people that love it as much as, you know, we do. Um, but okay. So you, you high school gets done. When did you decide, like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to start uploading videos. Like what yeah. did, how, and how did that come about? Like, how did you start? Why did you start doing that? Yeah. So, um, it, from the gate, like, the second I got my first bow, it was always ingrained in my head because how I came up into yep. hunting was through video content, right? Was through mm-hmm. uh, Gray Outdoors, Real Tree Monster Bucks, those guys. So um, it was always ingrained in my head that's like, it would be cool to film this. It would be cool to film this. And every year that I would hunt, I mean, year after year after year, mm-hmm. always in my head, like, how could I get a camera? I need to save up money for a camera. Like this is really cool. And a lot of, and at that time, especially when I was younger, I didn't even know anybody who bow hunted. Like I was the only person oh, I knew. Wow. Yeah. So it, it wasn't until I was about, 
I think 15 years old. So I'd gone a couple seasons. I was the only person I knew who even hunted. Um, I was 15 years old. I met my buddy Wes. Um, well, I'd always, always known him through church, but I just didn't know he hunted. Um, and then like his parents, my parents got to talk and I was like, yeah, Joel's really gotten this into this bow hunting thing, you know, and his parents are like, Wes loves bow hunting, you know, I should get together and go hunt. But Wes was, um, like my oldest brother's age group. So Wes, right now, Wes is like 36 and I'm 29. So that was the age yeah. gap. You're 15. Wes is like yeah. starting, you yeah. know? So like the age gap was just like huge, but we didn't care because both of us bow hunted. Like we had commonality yeah. bow hunting and neither of us really knew anybody else who hunted. So it was like, yeah. heck yeah, you know? So, um, for the first year he would like come pick me up at my house and I'd like, go, uh, or mom would drop me off at his house and then we'd go out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it was sweet. It was a lot of fun. So Wes and I kind of grew up hunt, and still to this day, he's one of my absolute best hunting buddies. We do yeah, a hunt. Seen, I've seen him in a bunch of videos um, now that you say that. So yeah, that makes sense. Now. Yep. So, yep. So yeah. him and I kind of just like shared the same passions and, and obsession for early on. And same thing. It's just through now he's got a wife, three kids, and he's got his own dental practice. He's doing great stuff out in Alabama. but. Um, so he's not here anymore. He was, he was living in Nebraska, you know, up through yeah. when I was like 18, he moved. So since then we've just been going back and forth and doing hunts, figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, finding somebody like we talked about earlier to do it with you, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. And I ain't gonna lie to you. The, I, uh, the, I, I think it was Idaho, uh, elk that video, Uh huh. man. You know, it's like that one got me in my feels. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. The, the production quality on that video—that's your best video by far. Appreciate it. It might not have the most views, but that video made me feel some type of way. I was like watching it, like it's the sound you guys had. It's the, you can just tell too how much work you guys had put in. And I think I, Wes was in that video, correct? Yep. Yep. So yeah. It uh, Idaho elk. It was at that time. It was just like a general season tag. Um, oh, okay. now egg for that unit, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we went, did an elk hunt. Um, the first day we went with my friend Lydia, uh, she knew the area pretty well, uh, fairly well. She'd been in their shed hunting before. So, uh, we hunted the first day with Lydia, then she took off and she hunted her, went and hunted her tag, different unit. And Wes and I were just, I mean, just trying to learn everything we could about that unit and learn how the elk were working in there. And yeah, it came down to the last day on our hike out. Like we oh, were hiking really? truck. That's when I shot that bull the last day. So we'd been in there for, yeah, we'd been on a couple different camps, but I mean, multiple days at a time and deep. And we got into elk multiple times, multiple times, but it, it was always just like a hair out of range or the bulls were moving and pushing cows so they wouldn't stop for a shot. And yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it was, it was pretty cool. And the thing, the thing about hunts like that, um, you learn a lot about yourself and you learn a lot about your hunting partner when you're in situations where it's like, we got to get this done now. And yeah. when I saw that bull up on that Ridge, I remember just saying that cause Wes had to fly out the next morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he was kind of like, and that's the thing too. Wes and I are both like, you shoot it. No, you shoot it. You yeah. shoot it. Yeah. Wes is like, I fly out the next morning, you know, let's go up there. Let's try to kill this bull. I'm like, all right, let's roll. And, uh, by the time we got down to the Creek bottom, we both dropped our backpacks and it was like straight up this mountain to get to where these, these elk were crossing up top. And no, neither of us even let off the gas. Like it was yeah. one the other like basically jogging up this yeah. incline, just unreal you know and but it takes a hunting partner like that to be right behind you right on your heels yeah getting there and uh west didn't even know how to run a camera i put everything on audio i turned it on or, or, or on auto turned it on and hit record and just threw the camera back to him and he just captured everything so it was pretty it sweet. was awesome yeah and you know i just 
did a podcast with Dan at Elk Shape, and we mm-hmm. talked really in depth about the people we surround ourselves with that we take hunting on trips like that out the Midwest, you know, I mean, out the Midwest, out to the West, because, you know, Midwest whitetail, it is what it is, but man, having somebody to push you while you're out there, because yeah. I mean, you know, as well as anybody, I'm just learning that we just got out there last year. You, you need somebody when you look up and you're like, I don't want to go up there and you turn back and they're like, let's go, go down. let's go. Yeah. You know, you don't want to look back and then be like, well, let's yeah. Let's, yeah. Uh, you don't, yeah. Partner that like, when you're ready to go and you're rearing, like, no, this is happening. We're getting up there. And you look mm-hmm. back like, yeah, man, I mean, I'll wait here at the trail for you. It's like, yeah, dude, exactly. you need to be up there and like back off 50 yards and call. I need you to try to bring the bull in, yeah. you know, or vice yeah. versa. I'm going to do that for you. Same situation. So you definitely want to have in the mountains, like yes. you say, in the, in the Midwest, like I've taken people hunting in the Midwest who have quite literally zero experience hunting whatsoever mm-hmm. and they've been successful. Um, mm-hmm. So the Midwest is one thing out yeah. West, like yeah. mountains, whole nother beast. Um, and you can go and you can have fun and you can hunt near the roads and stuff like that and be successful. But if you really want to elevate that next level of like experience, just getting into elk multiple, Mm -hmm. multiple times a day, or, you know, just heightening your chances of actually punching a tag or maybe two tags, maybe both of you guys tag out. Yeah. Um, you got to have the mentality and you got to have the physical drive to even do it. So yeah, it means a lot to have a hunting partner like that. And I've got a few hunting partners now who are like that. And it's like, yeah. it's a ton of fun when we all get together on hunt or it's just like all go. So it's fun. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And that's why, I mean, we, we, like I said, we've talked about that a bunch, but that's why I surround myself with the guys that I do just because, you know, same situation. And you know what we learned last year, we didn't work hard enough last year in, in Colorado. Um, mm. we, and I talked about that last podcast too, but it just, we just didn't work hard enough because if <laughs> there's a reason units in Colorado, Idaho, all that are like 15% kill rates, because you got to go with anything. If you're running a business, you got to go so much further than everybody else was willing to go. But, and it's not easy. Everyone would kill an elk if it was that easy, you know, yep. um, in business, you know, I run, I have a business elk hunting, whatever it is, you just got to be willing to do what other people aren't. So yeah, the, the, the partnership's huge, I think. So I'm glad you talked yep. about that with Wes and yeah, like that Idaho video though, those people that helped you guys out seem like the sweetest people, like the those, most down to earth people I've ever seen in my life. And they didn't even talk. So, yeah. We, uh, we met them on the first day, actually we had, um, they're so they have like the whole cattle uh a contract for that area of oh, the yeah. unit uh, they run their cattle up in the mountain so they know and, that place well yeah so anyway so he's like he's like got his camp with um i'm not sure if i never asked i wasn't sure if if they definitely were at least dating i didn't know if they were yeah. wife and husband but Um, anyway, they had their little camp, they have their horses, they've got their dogs and stuff like that. And we met them the first day and, um, we were just talking to them and stuff. And, and it's like, well, have you seen any hunting pressure over here, whatever? And he's like, he asked us where we were hunting. He's like, well, where are you planning on hunting? I told him the peak of the mountain that we were planning on hunting. And he's like, you know, that's not an ATV road he's like you can't take atvs and he was almost kind of standoffish at first he's mm-hmm. like you can't take atvs in there he's like no no no, we're not like we're hiking in we're not taking atvs he's like you're hiking into that i was like i mean yeah we were planning on it he's like if you kill something in there like good on you because it was just so far away from yeah me. yeah and that's why he's like asking about he's like oh Yo, you can't take atvs in there it's yeah, like no no yeah no and he's like and then it was just like an instant respect once he's like, oh, you're going to go hunt up there. All right, well, good on you. And he, he had said on the first day, he said, let me know if you kill something. I've got pack horses. So I was like, that stuck in the back of my head. And I hadn't even thought about it until after I'd killed that bull. <laughs> I shot that bull. And that, that night, I had to bring 
west all the way back to the airport and then drive all the way back out and then that's when i met up with them and we went and hiked up in there to find it so how many was, miles how many miles do you think you walked in 24 hours there oh lord <laughs> i uh, 50 <laughs> i don't know i mean probably because we were packing camp out i shot the bull so the morning we woke up we hunted the entire that entire back side of the mountain came back down to camp that was the morning was probably an eight mile situation. And then from camp, hiking it back out was probably another, from camp to where I shot the bull was maybe another four. And then from the bull to the trailhead, it was three. And then coming back in to find the bull was like a whole nother, probably six. But by the time we got everything figured out, but the pack horses coming out was oh. like. Yeah, that, that's huge. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I, you gotta I, I, take how many trips by yourself? I like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I had to make, I mean, a solid three if I was gonna try to kill myself, but a solid four trips. Luckily, the bull was three miles from trailhead, so it would have been, which is still a long ways. Like mm -hmm. that's yeah. long, but it was it was a three easy miles. There was only one um, little downhill where the bull died it died in a ravine and there was a little downhill to get out of the ravine and then it was basically meadow like a three mile meadow walk all the way out oh, so that yeah. was like way easier you had to cross a couple creeks but they were just like there were no deeper than knee high creek and you just walk across it um so i mean a solid four trips solo to get it out yeah. but i didn't have to pack anything for weight uh, we put all of the like all the quarters, everything, all the cut meats on those horses. And they were just like taking it in stride, just walking out, you know, I carried out the rack and that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was, I saw, that's awesome. Yeah. What an experience, man. That's so, so yeah. So I didn't mean to go too far down that road, but that, that I, video just really was like good production. I, great video. I appreciate it. Yeah. And like I say, with my style of filming, I self film pretty much everything. So, um, it's really, really hard to elk hunt with a bow. It's way harder to elk hunt with a bow while trying to self film it. Yes. And so, like I say, I, I was happy Wes was behind me. I could just toss the camera, but I was going to shoot the bull, whether it was on film or not. I was, yeah. And that's, I've pretty well ingrained into my, just my style and my brand and stuff like that. Like, it's just who I am. I'm, I'm going to punch my tag. Mm -hmm. whether it's on video or not so i've i've had the video aspect cost me way too many tags and i'm not willing to do it anymore i i mean i've i've passed up shots on whitetail that like i like i shoot myself to this day thinking yeah. about it why did i i passed 140 inch white at yeah. 12 steps because it wasn't on video and I don't shoot that many 140 inch whitetail. So why would mm -hmm. I ever yeah. do that? You know? Yeah. It's funny you say that is, you know, I'm newer to, I would say filming. Um, mm -hmm. But one self-filming is, as you know, is really, really tough. And same thing. I mean, this year I had that deer that the guy showed me on his phone. I had him at like 35 yards and I was messing with my stupid camera, trying to make sure oh. everything was perfect. Um, you know, it, yeah. So it's just one of those things, you know, I, I've made that kind of vow lately as well. Like the the buck I killed after I saw him that same day, actually, he came by five yards moving and mm -hmm. I just didn't even, I didn't even touch my camera cause he was underneath me. I just, but I think I'm going to try to do for more whitetail hunting, more GoPros, just some more angles. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's not that important, um, but you can make a video out of that and, and that's all yep. that matters as long as someone can be in the moment a little bit with me, you know? Yeah. And just have like a, in the states that it's legal to have stuff attached to your bow you can have like a point of view camera on your bow yeah exactly on, yeah. at least to capture something but and that's kind of what i was like when that situation happened with that 140 i was just like i thought about it afterward in the moment i just was i was just like i really want to get this on film and i thought about it afterward and i'm like how stupid of me to like past something that i would have been so happy for and like an opportunity that 
very few people get like mm -hmm. very rarely do anybody get opportunities like that all for the sake of production and video it's like that to me that was me doing it for the wrong reason and yeah. it just like instantly hit like the second it happened and, and i passed the deer like in my head i'm like oh never doing that again like yeah. ever yeah watching it walk away i'm like i could have shot that <laughs> yeah and you know it's it's just crazy you said that because i think when you first start filming you never turn on your camera enough because you're always like oh yeah camera oh yeah. yeah like it's new right to learn self-learn camera camera film this film us talking film us, and then all of a sudden you get so into you know you're learning cameras always got to be on you just get that it's hard balance because it's like you always are thinking camera because you in the early days you're trying to and then right. late in the late days it's like i'm like uh, you know it's it's just crazy it's very hard to do right. i think people underestimate sometimes some of the quality of stuff people get and yeah. execute is like yeah it's, it's unreal it's unreal for sure i if there's a, like people that kill 180 inch deer on camera <laughs> i want to know like what type of heart rate they had because there's no way i'm i'm operating a camera with a yeah. 180 inch deer and drawing my bow i just don't see myself executing that very well the very first time you know yeah so. and it's one of those things too it's you definitely get better at it the more you do it yeah. um and luck i say luckily it's not a lucky thing i wish it wasn't this way but where i hunt and the places i have access to hunt just don't produce really big deer like at least in nebraska like none of my properties in nebraska like I will shoot a 130 inch deer in Nebraska every chance I get, because there's, mm -hmm. I don't have, if you don't have the caliber of deer on the property, you'll never shoot that caliber of deer, especially. And now I, I understand the like pass them and let them go. But I'm saying like our five and a half year old deer is 130 inch deer. It's the yeah. biggest deer on the property. So I'm going to shoot 130 inch yeah. every time and if it's a mature animal and that's just how it goes around here just because the way the way nebraska's rifle season stuff is set up is just really really um detrimental to the age class of our deer herds so yeah. it just it kind of is what it is but um yeah, same, now, I mean, yeah. If i can hold out in Missouri and get a, a shot on a nice buck I'll, I'll try to hold out but i just get excited man i love shooting yeah. deer you know yeah i'm the same way i i mean yeah, I'm the same way. Look, I, I'm, I'm always trying to let deer go and, 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 and manage my, you know, properties. My dad owns property. That's how I grew up hunting. Um, he owns a few hundred acres that we grew up hunting on. And it's tough. Like you said, rifle season in Missouri is like a holiday here. In Missouri. Yeah. yeah. People's, if you drive on the highway the week before rifle season, you will see every truck with a trailer with an ATV behind it someone with an orange cap, like it's a holiday here. So I think that plays a part, but we did have um four point restrictions added yeah so i think that helped a little bit years back i think that kind of you know helps generate uh, more mature deer but but yeah um i've never hunted nebraska I, I will tell you i do know how nice of golf courses they have because i love golf and they nebraska's got like some pristine courses i was actually yeah. looking at them the other day so there's there's some good i'm not I like playing golf. I'm not great at golf, but there's some nice courses around here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go down the golf, golf path. That's my <laughs> second addiction, but anyways. Yeah. So take me back though to like, how'd you come up with whitetail fit? Obviously yeah. you love fitness. Um, how'd you start the YouTube channel? When did it start and kind of what you learned along the way? Yeah. So actually right around this time, it was June of 2016 is when I actually decided to like make it uh, like a brand and actually try to pursue something with the brand. Um, before that, a couple of years prior before that is when I actually started filming. So I started filming probably three years before that. So 2013, I would have started filming and it was just like I made my own camera arm to go on the tree just out of some steel it so I, I worked construction for 13 years before doing this and uh i knew how to weld and stuff like that so i i made a um camera, camera yeah. out of scrap steel at work you know and put a put a quarter 20 
adapter on it so I could screw my camera down onto it and I'd, I'd film with that. And um, you still have that framed up? up. You still have that arm? I do. I you do. Should frame that. I should. And it's, put it in, on the wall. And as cumbersome as it gets, but <laughs> yeah. I, I kept it because I was just like, this is cool. It's nostalgia. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, when, you're, when you're 60, you're going to look at that and, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt yeah. you. Okay. So, um, so got into that. And then uh, 2016 is when I was like, I kind of want to start because I'd already had like a personal um, Instagram account where I'd mm-hmm. followed some pages. So I was like, oh, this is cool, you know. And I kind of started seeing this, a trending thing on Instagram just to where it was like, is that guy doing this for a living? You know, is, is that guy doing this for a living? And then it's like, oh, well, I mean, he's got sponsors and, and brands that are supporting him. And he sells his own apparel. And, he, you know, so I'm like, mm-hmm. I'll start with apparel and see see if I can, you know, at least make some money for a fuel trip to go out to Western Nebraska and hunt you know, out there. So the first year was, the first year was just about like establishing the brand. Mm -hmm. And when I came up with whitetail fit, I had like several names written down on paper, you know, I was sitting there and writing all sorts of, give me a few of those. What were some, here's the thing. I wish I would have kept that piece of paper because I completely forgot what I came up with. Oh yeah. That would have been cool. I remember thinking some of them were like pretty good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I gosh, I wish I kept it's I'm sure it's somewhere like now nah, it probably got shredded because it was a it was at work. I was writing all this stuff down at work. And uh so anyway, and I remember I wrote out so when I was when I came out of high school, I was like 128 pounds dripping wet. I was super mm-hmm. scrawny, just like I just didn't eat a lot. <laughs> and yeah. uh I was just I had good genetics, like my mom and dad and stuff, I had good genetics, but I just didn't eat a lot. So I was just a skinny kid. So I came out of high school, like 128 pounds, didn't like the way I looked. I wanted to kind of just put on some size and stuff. So that's what kind of got, I got into weightlifting and then weightlifting, like you just said about golf, weightlifting became like my second passion that was like as heavily, you know, obsessive as hunting. So I was, I had two passions that were just like, very, meant so much to me and it was fitness and hunting so anyway I was I was sitting there I was writing different stuff down you know and and um, I wrote out what do I love about hunting and I wrote out whitetail I love hunting whitetails my number one species and at that time it's really the only big game I'd ever chased aside some from turkey because I didn't have any opportunity to go out west yeah so I was just like, I mean, financially there was, just, I just couldn't make it happen in any Western hunt. Yeah. So I wrote out whitetail. I love whitetail hunting. I was like, what do I love about weightlifting and stuff? What do I love about like what, how it makes me feel, whatever. I'm just like, I feel fit. I like the fitness side, like being able to do things that I didn't used to be able to do in high school because I'm just like, I've got more endurance. I can mm-hmm. lift more weight around work. It was like, it was showing out at work. Like I did a lot of concrete work. So lifting 80 pound bags, a, a dry sack, it's like, there's a noticeable difference when you're yeah. 155, 170 pounds versus when you're 130 pounds. So yeah. I was like, well, I like being fit. I'm like white tail fit. <laughs> <laughs> that literally was like all it was. So I've had, I've gone on podcasts. I've gone and talked to people like interviews and stuff like that. And yeah. people, are like, so tell me about how, how fitness helps you whitetail hunting and stuff like that. I'm like, well, that's not what it's about. Honestly. Like yeah. I like whitetail, like fitness. Yeah. Do the two go hand in hand? Absolutely. Like, yeah, you definitely can have a better experience whitetail hunting, especially public land, hang and hunt stuff like that. If you're in shape. Yeah. I'm not about to tell anybody that you have to, you know, bench certain numbers, squat certain numbers or deadlift certain yeah. numbers to be able to kill a whitetail. Cause it's just not, that's just not how it works. Um, it can help. It can make your experience better, but it's not like a foundation that you have to have for whitetail hunting. Now, Western hunting, yeah, that's I would, would argue the complete opposite. Um, but 
every what I've found, and this was how I was, every whitetail, every Midwest whitetail hunter's dream is a western elk hunt during the rut. It, it just seems to be like what I've gathered everybody I talk to. And my thing has always been what better way to prepare for your western hunt than get in shape for a couple of years, utilize that type of that activity and that fitness level during your whitetail hunts and start transitioning into the Western hunt. So you're not caught off guard when you go out West, if you go out West, you haven't done any type of cardio, hiking, backpack, hiking, anything like that in endurance training, anything. If you go out West, haven't done any of that. Yeah. You're probably going to be hunting pretty close to the truck and that's okay. Yeah. It's experience that I want. Yeah. You know, your day, your days are limited out there. It costs a yeah. lot. You don't want to waste minutes and time that's what dan elkship was saying he goes you midwest guys are at a at disadvantage you have yeah. the, the drive time you have you have no experience out there you don't get to scout it and your days are limited you have to execute on very limited days unlike us that yeah. live out here and it's true like then why would you want to waste those but you know a lot of people do want to go out and just camp that's that's yeah. fine for like sure you said um but and i want to kill you know i want to kill something you know but yeah, just sorry to your point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so, no, that's a good point. I don't want to interrupt you either, but I really think why I think your brand is growing, you know, and I think is successful and however you want to define success, but I think it's the message more than anything, you know, of course you don't have to be fit to whitetail hunt and sit in a deer stand. Um, but it gives you more opportunity, but every, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are looking that love to hunt. Right. But are they going to go to the fitness side of Instagram? to find what they're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's a tough side to adjust to. And you got two different, you know, categories and you're bridging that gap, I think a little bit, which I I appreciate because it, that was one thing that I wanted to really hone in on because like I say, I had, I have equal passion for both sides, the fitness side and the hunting side, probably more the hunting side, but like, yeah, I enjoy fitness and it's the mentality that fitness gives me as well. It's like, it wakes me up out of bed every morning. It, you know, it, it gives me that extra drive that just, it all corresponds with hunting. So, but that's one thing that I wanted to do when I started this brand was I don't want to start a full blown, a full scale brand in the hunting industry. And I don't want to start a full scale brand in the exactly. fitness industry. I have to manage both and have to, you know, have two separate entities basically because so i was like i want to merge the two yeah i I want to be on one platform and i just want to talk about and do what i am passionate about the most and that's hunting and fitness yeah so it kind of it kind of it worked out well to this point um like i say i've been i've been doing this august of this year i've been doing this full time now for two years so yeah. And so that's a good point. Cause I want to ask, you know, I think a lot of people, when you watch people on YouTube, you always wonder, I'm like, did they have day jobs? Did they, do they, did, when do they quit? Like I've always, as a kid, right. As a kid growing up watching outdoor channel, YouTube, I'm like, these guys do this for a living, you know, like, so without, you know, diving too much into like your, you know, personal, you know, financial life, when did you, did you always want to quit your day job and do this full time, obviously like we all kind of want to do, but did you know that was possible when you started this? And then when it became possible, how did that make you, like, how'd that feel? Yeah. So, um, right away I knew there could be the potential for making money, but I didn't know that it, I wouldn't say early on that I knew it could be a sustainable full-time income, Yeah, but I knew there could be like, enough income like i say to put a tank of gas in the truck to go on a hunt try to do a hunt maybe pay for half of a tag or something like that um so when i started the brand like before it's crazy before i did like anything on the i made sure all of the names weren't taken so the domain for Mm -hmm. whitetail across Mm -hmm. all platforms i created a profile across youtube twitter instagram Facebook, um, just created all my profiles. And then I went and like locally, I pulled a tax ID number on the name Whitetail Fit to work as a sole proprietorship um, before I really even launched like that I have a brand. 
So I, I knew like right away, if there was any money to be coming in, I would need to be able to take care of it with my taxes and do it the right way. So I was just like, I'm just going to go pull a tax ID number on it, have the name, and then I'll start it. And that kind of, cause I'm always, I, I like to plan ahead to a certain extent. So it was like, that will light the fire under me to get this moving, right? Mm-hmm. Like I already got things in place, so let's get it moving. Um, so anyway, I did that and like within the first, I could look back, but within the first couple of months of having Whitetail Fit as a brand, because I just like, I went to my, my personal page, I had like 1200 followers or something like that. And I just yeah. went and put my personal page because there was starting to be people on my personal page who enjoyed my hunting content. And so I just made a post on my personal page. Hey, everybody go follow my new account. It's called Whitetail Fit know bridging the gap with hunting and fitness and going to be posting a lot more on there so it brought over like a very very small crowd from there you know but then i just started posting on whitetail fit and starting to grow that page and within a couple of months um i went to my local screen printer and i had like an idea for some logos and stuff it's like hey here's what i want to put on a t-shirt can you do that and they're like yeah we can do that made up a couple t-shirts and i sold i sold like I think, I mean, a ton of my friends and family bought stuff. So it was like, they were helping support. So, um, I think the first sale I ever ran, I sold like, like $900 worth of merch. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I've made it. I've made it. Like I'm going to be doing this for a living. Is that how you bought the uh, Cavalier? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Probably not far off. That would have been around the time I bought that thing. So funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I, it, it just showed me that like, okay, if I put my mind towards this, yeah, here's the effort I put in to this point, and look at this, I made $900 off of selling hats and t-shirts, like, that's cool. So then I, I started like developing a lot more passion for the merch side. So like, just getting into that side, because I knew that was a a revenue stream that was possible. I still, mm-hmm. at that point, I didn't know anything about nobody. No, I didn't have any sponsors or anything like that. Obviously I was just starting. I had nothing to give mm-hmm. sponsors, you know? So, um, and the nice thing is where it's grown to this point, everybody that I work with has been like people I want to work with for certain reasons. Like, other than my Alpine micro, I had one other bow and then I've shot Hoyt for over a decade. Mm. Well, with that, like one of my main sponsors is Hoyt. And that just kind of naturally came along with going to trade shows, meeting people, talking to people and just like explaining who I am, what I do and stuff like that. It kind of was just a natural transition into Hoyt. Same thing with Easton. Yeah. I've shot arrows as long as I've shot Hoyt. So it it's like a snowball effect with the companies that I've chose to work with. And it's been so nice because they're like, they're easy to work with because they want to work with me and I want to work with them. So it it makes it nice. But so anyway, I I can't quite remember what your question was, but that's kind of like how revenue streams work, I guess, inside of my brand. And so that's a good point though. I do want to ask you. So like with sponsorships, like, I mean, early on, you're probably like, I would love to have a sponsor. So when the first people came, Eve, was there ever the first people that came to you or was there people that came to you? I guess is the first question. And then second question would be is, did you ever go, well, I, I don't really use their stuff, but hey, they're offering to sponsor me. Like, cause people always start their YouTube channel, right? There's a lot of guys that are early on, right? Right. Like our, ourselves and stuff. So when people come along, were you cautious to take on something that you probably didn't believe in or did you try some new stuff in the beginning. Walk me through that. Absolutely. So in, in the beginning, I really wanted to stick to my roots of like, here's what I know. I like, I'm not like, yeah, I'm not, not going to try new stuff because if I haven't it before, I can't, I can't say that I like it or don't like it, but I'm definitely promote it until I've tried it and gone through the workings of if I like it. Um, so I was spending a lot of my own money early on buying products, trying different products, trying, especially with like, I'm, I still, to this day, I'm a complete 
gear nerd with um it's really really hard for me i've had like broadhead companies come at me with certain stuff and it's really hard for me to sign with any type of broadhead because i'm just like i like to try them all like yeah yeah. i want to like i'm experimenting with everything and just like shooting all the different heads and stuff and yeah so anyway there's certain stuff like that that i'm kind of i just kind of stay distant because it's just really personal preference um but luckily some of the early brands who came and talked to me about stuff i'd go to ata trade show and stuff like that and sit down and talk with people some of the first my first um actual paid partnership was with realtree and i i'd been i'd been wearing realtree your whole life yeah started So, and I've been watching all the videos and everything like that. So, like I say that it was, it's all the companies that I work with have all been super easy decisions. Um, One company that I worked with right after Realtree, the very next partner that I worked with was America's Best Bowstrings. Mm, And uh, so they were like, hey, we're going to send out a uh, set of strings and cables. Let us know how you like them. I shot America's best bow strings for a year and a half before I ever signed on any type of dotted line that was like, yes, really? I want to. Wow. So I, I shot America's best bow strings for a year and a half. After a year and a half, I was sold on them because I've, I've had strings and cables move on me, the t- peeps twist and everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The ABBs never did that. They, they held up to everything that all the abuse and all the hunts that I put them through. So I was like, yes, this is a company I want to work with. They're good people. The product is solid. So Mm -hmm. it was like, yeah, let's work with it. And then in that, it was kind of cool because I was able to come up with my own string and cable combination. So I actually have my own whitetail fit signature series line through ABB. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So like I say, they were, they were one, one of the first partners that i even had and i'm still currently working with them so i haven't honestly i haven't had like i'm trying to think back i don't think i've had any partners drop off like it's just been a very working relationship so yeah and so i think it's kind of ironic that the first movie you ever bought was a real tree movie and real tree called you for the first sponsorship that's you know yeah Yeah, it's kind of cool i mean it took meeting the right people and in the right place like the one of the first people I ever talked to at Realtree was Tyler Jordan. So oh, it's really? like, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a pretty easy connection for him and I, cause we're the same age. Yeah. And yeah. I saw him at a trade show booth at ATA and I just stopped him. I was like, Hey, I don't mean to take like any of your time. I just wanted to introduce myself, tell you who I am, what I, a little bit about what I do. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but just wanted to say, I appreciate you. I appreciate your dad. And I appreciate what, the real tree family has done yeah. for me in life and it just it just like was real easy yeah i talk all the time now so it's just like it was a very easy friendship right out the gate and i think that probably helped with at least the business side of things but i honestly was just coming at tyler as like hey i grew up on your dad's videos you know <laughs> same same and young young skinny michael waddell i mean when you were earlier i didn't uh say this but i had the v the uh, uh the tapes of um michael waddell when he was young skinny yeah. michael waddell hunting and you know bill jordan but um no it, it's funny that you said that you approached him like that because i i i currently work a 40 hour week job in sales and th- now i've got it so now okay. i've got one responsibility <laughs> but uh yeah i've got i've got uh three older brothers um very close with my mom and dad very close with all my brothers and and uh just a good family life so yeah that's awesome now yeah. do you so you're you're totally i mean your days are consumed with um everything your brand everything hunting you know video all that stuff um I, are you in a camper right now do you travel around in a camper <laughs> is that yeah. what i would this is, this is actually my home. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised decided. you haven't uh, got a girl to adapt. To that right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's all my friends yeah. are saying. Like, are you going to, you know, like go watch a movie with a girl or something like <laughs> amper? I'm like, 
dude, if she don't want to come back to camper, she's not the one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I made, decision, I made the decision last year because I was up on. Um, it's just so much cheaper. Yeah. Financially, whatever, it's just so much cheaper. And um, made the decision last year because I was uh, I was up on the Wasatch front, or this has been two years ago, I guess. It's up on the Wasatch front mule deer hunting. And I got like a little bit of service and a text message came in and I used to rent from my brother and my brother's like, Hey, rent's due or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'll, I'll PayPal or Venmo or something over. And then I'm like, I started thinking about, it. I'm like, I haven't been home for three weeks. Mm-hmm. Like fair is fair. I got to pay rent. Right. But I'm just like, I'm paying rent on a place that I haven't even been home for three weeks, you know? So I'm just, I'm I'm on the road constantly. I'm traveling constantly. So the small amount of time that I am here, I was just like, I'm going to go look at trailers and just see like how nice of a camping trailer can I find, you know, Mm -hmm. and turns out you can find really nice camping trailers. (laughs) Like this thing, this thing's set up with like, I mean, it's just, it's wild. I could show you a little bit about take you on a little tour here. Yeah, it looks super nice just from the, yeah, the view. Got, I was thinking it was dang, it's got a full TV. Yeah, it's setup. got like a full, I could fit like a 43 inch TV. It's got like a this like pantry and stuff. Oh wow. Yeah. Um refrigerator. Keep all my goods in there. It's got yeah. stainless steel dang, stove. Full, uh, yeah. Microwave, full, full deal. I mean it's and dang. the bedroom's like a the bedroom has like a queen size bed, full bathroom, full stand up shower and stuff. So it's just like, you know what? I don't need much. Yeah. I, I can make do. And I, so I've got a little storage storage unit out here that I keep all my stuff I would have had in the garage. Mm-hmm. I downsized, like made a huge downsizing to do this, but I'm so glad I did now yeah. that I'm in it and now that it's, it, I'm, and I even lived in it through this last winter and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, but yeah, I'll pull it around to like, I kind of plan on pulling it out to Arizona this mm-hmm. coming like December, January, and just spend some time out there. And the nice thing is it is mobile and I have a three quarter ton diesel mm-hmm. so I can pull it wherever I want. And yeah, so it's nice. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I love that. No, we, I'm building, <laughs> I'm converting a cargo trailer into a hunting rig, you know, type of thing. Uh, but down the road, I would definitely, uh, want to get like just a nice little small camper just for all the hunting trips. Like instead of trying to rent out a place, you know, cause I can all, we can always, we have power at a lot of our places. We just go park, hook up right. to the power and go hunt. Um, no, I think that's awesome. That's pretty cool. So yeah, the only thing that's tough about this one is it's like, it's like 40 foot. So it's mm-hmm. like a massive, yeah. <laughs> If you, yeah. if you if I do move it, it's kind of an ordeal, but it's it's been it's nice. nice and I save a lot of money it, with just the way the economy's going and the way uh, the housing market is. Because my my goal a couple of years ago was to build, mm-hmm. and then right about the time I was ready to build, all the all the cost on building materials, all the wood, everything just yep. shot the roof, and it's like, well, now's not the time to build. Yeah. And I don't want to keep paying on rent. So it's like, so I just went and bought a camper. <laughs> like, that's yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, no, we bought a house last year. We put in like seven offers before we got a house. So yeah. um, I advise any, <laughs> now nah, people are still buying houses like crazy. It's, I hated the process because we looked and we put offers in within four hours of every single one of those, like them being mm-hmm. listed. I say four hours, four hours from the morning that we got listed um and lost them the cash you know deal yep. so it's like i hated Big. it i hated it yeah if i could have bought a camper and convinced my fiance i would have i, I would have definitely done it the only way is is uh because all my buddies who are like yeah you're gonna take a girl back to your camper yeah. or whatever <laughs> yeah. first of all that's not i don't even care like that's not why i'm yeah. staying a camper yeah. second of all, all of them are like well if i could get my wife to stay in oh, one yeah. It's like <laughs> everybody's always trust me. Oh, you I know. realize that too because there were you know when you're single, they're they're always like, man, you know, um, you know, I can't believe you're doing that. But they're like, hey, man, I wish I could go do that with you. You know, I wish I could. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. And now that I'm engaged, I'm like, hey, w- wish I could go do that with you. You know, but yeah. uh, 
but no, I'm, like um, I'm big into MMA, like mixed martial oh, arts, yeah, yeah. And watching it and and following along with it. So I'll, I'll have like UFC fight nights and stuff at my camper. That's cool. That's cool. My buddies will come over and stuff, and I've got you know the TV. I put I put yeah. surrounds camper, so we'll like sit down and watch the fights and stuff. Awesome. And every time my buddies are like, "This is nice, dude." You know, it's yeah, like yeah. you were hating on it when I bought it, and now yeah. everybody's like dude i kind of like the camper thing's kind of cool you know yeah that's hilarious yeah um do you have like a designated spot that you park it in, yeah. in nebraska you do yeah I, like i say my parents have got six acres out here so okay. i was able luckily it's really close to the lake with, that we've got down here so ran power and just got it hooked up that way yeah and close to mom's cooking smart move there you know yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah. that's that's smart um <laughs> but uh yeah dude i look i've got a ton to talk about but look it's you know been over an hour and i really really appreciate you jumping on yeah. um yeah it means a lot no we're trying to have some more people on and just kind of you know talk about our passion for hunting i was going to tell you as well um i'm in missouri so if you ever want to come hunt um or link up and and do something and hunt i've got a tons of uh, spots to go heck yeah um, dude too I appreciate many, it. yeah too many spots to to even take care of at this point but but yeah, we'll, uh, I'll stay in touch and stuff. And I appreciate it a lot. So heck yeah. I appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. yeah it was a good time. So it was good to meet you as well. So yeah, you too, for sure. Yeah. I'll have, yeah. I'll have to link up with you if I come down to Missouri. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Holler at me. I know, know some good spots as well. So yeah, appreciate it. Cool.